Are you serious? Are you serious? America has lost a tremendous hero in General Stormin Norman Schwarzkopf. Yesterday, December 27, 2012, the powerful four-star general left this world. He died at the age of 78 there in Tampa, Florida from pneumonia. Uh, Norman Schwarzkopf, of course, is famously known for leading the coalition forces during the Persian Gulf War back in 1991. Known as Storm and Norman, Schwarzkopf kept an illustrious military career by commanding the U.S.-led international coalition that drove Saddam Hussein forces out of Kuwait back in 1991. But he managed to keep a low profile in the public debate over the second Gulf War against Iraq. He did say at one point that he doubted that victory in Iraq would be as easily as the, as the White House and the Pentagon had predicted. He was right there. Schwarzkopf was named Commander-in-Chief of the U.S. Central Command in Tampa's MacDill Air Force Base back in 1988, overseeing the headquarters for the U.S. military and security concerns in nearly two dozen countries, stretching across the Middle East to Afghanistan and the rest of Central Asia, plus Pakistan. When Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait two years later, allegedly to punish them for stealing Iraqi oil reserves, Schwarzkopf commanded an Operation Desert Storm. The coalition of some 30 countries, organized by President George H. W. Bush, that succeeded in driving the Iraqis out of Kuwait. Of course, ironically, that George H. W. Bush, or Bush 41, is suffering uh, from pneumonia and chronic bronchitis and is in the ICU there in Houston Methodist Hospital. And so we pray for the former president. Would you please pray for the family of Norman Schwarzkopf and uh, as, this, as they are mourning the loss of a, truly a tremendous American hero. There's not many of them left. I don't like war. I hate war. But I realize that in a world of tyrancies, in a world of communist regimes and murderous and mayhem of militant Muslims... One must understand that Jesus said that if the goodman of the house had known what hour the thief was coming, he would have not suffered his home to be broken up. And there comes a time when the men and women in uniform who stand between us and the wiles of the devil have to be prayed for and looked after and understood the, the tremendous responsibility that they have. Being a father of two sons in the military, I lift them up every day in prayer, realizing that they're standing between that thin line of our freedom and the fact that we could be in captivity. Matter of fact, speaking of heroes, let me read of one guy that I would not consider one. Pierce Morgan of CNN made a comment by saying both the Bible and the U.S. Constitution are inherently flawed and need to be amended. Really? What? 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 Pierce Morgan, are you serious? Are you serious? Oh, you're not an American. And maybe you should go back to England. America's got plenty of talent. We really don't need you. First of all, the U.S. Constitution... <laughs> though it's not the Bible, could have a few flaws in it over time, and those have been adjusted. But primarily, if you look at the spirit of the Constitution that was framed by our forefathers, it was based on biblical principles. And the freedom to speak, the freedom to worship, the freedom to, uh, of expression, the freedom to bear arms. Well, matter of fact, just all of the different freedoms and liberties that we've been given came, of course, with a great price. The fact that Pierce Morgan would feel that the Constitution was flawed, well, that's his opinion. He's not the only one. We've got a lot of haters of America who feel that way. 
but then throw in the Bible while you're at it, Pierce Morgan? What? But guess what? Norman Schwarzkopf fought and led forces. Not only he, but many, many, many thousands of American soldiers so that Pierce Morgan could come here from England, get one of the most lucrative media jobs in the world to criticize this very Constitution that so many soldiers bled and died to protect. Uh, so that he, even though he isn't an American citizen, could have a right to criticize this great land of opportunity. Pierce, you could go live in some other communistic nation like China. Uh, speaking of the Bible, the fact that he would criticize the Word of God, the Bible says that the Word of the Lord is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even dividing asunder the soul and the spirit, the joint and the mar. It's a discerner of the thought and the very intent of the heart. And the Bible says that the Word of the Lord is a lamp unto our feet and it's a light unto our path. And the Bible tells us that man can't live by bread alone, Pierce, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. And that word is not flawed. That manna is not rotted. That hope is still alive. The Bill of Rights tells us that the Congress of the United States begun and held in New York City on Wednesday, the 4th of March, Back in 1789, the conventions of a number of states having at the same time of their adopting the Constitution expressed a desire in order to prevent misconstruction or abuse of its powers that further declaratory and restrictive clauses should be added and as extending the ground of public confidence in the government will best ensure the benefit ends of its institution. Resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America, in Congress assembled two-thirds of both houses concurring that the following articles be proposed to the legislators of several states as amendments to the Constitution of the United States, all or any of which articles, when ratified by three-fourths said legislators, to be valid to all intents and purposes as part of the said Constitution. And those Bill of Rights begin to tell us that Amendment Number 1, Congress shall make no laws respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for red redress of grievances. Wow, that, that amendment is under scrutiny as we speak. Number two, a well-regulated militia being necessary to for the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. What? That is being debated as we speak heatedly. Also, no soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. Do you realize that that amendment is pretty well gone with the passage of eminent domain? The government can take anybody's property, seize any land that it, redeems, it deems necessary. And then President Barack Obama signed an executive order called NDAA 2012, indefinite detention, where the, where the government could come in and arrest you, throw you in a FEMA camp, interrogate you, not even read you your Miranda rights, handcuff you, no attorney, no phone call, indefinitely, if they need to, if they deem you a threat to this society. Folks, we might need to take another look at our Bill of Rights and ask ourselves, is Pierce Morgan one of the voices of the New World Order to not only do away with our Bill of Rights, but to do away with our Bible? Are we on the brink of the beast? Give your life to Jesus Christ. We're running out of